This is basically a TV episode version of The Crazies. If you know, you know. What's up guys, this is Courtney, one half of Resident Evil Construction here, and I'm bringing you my review for Twilight Zone episode 7, entitled Not All Men. This episode stars Taisa Formiga from American Horror Story, Rhea Seahorn, who I gonna know mostly from Franklin and Bash, but she's been in some other stuff as well. Percy Hines White, Ike Barinholtz, Luke Kirby, that's the main cast of people that have the most screen time in the episode. This episode is about a virus or some type of plague that only affects the men in this town and causes them to have violent outbursts. Now, from the previous episode, of course, as I stated before, they have a preview for the next episode at the end of each at the end of each episode. And seeing the preview for this episode, I was like, okay, it's titled Not All Men. <sighs> the, the preview showing Luke Kirby and Taisa Farmiga characters having like a, a, a date. Luke gets a little bit more grabby. Taisa rejects his advances. And then it shows Luke like destroying some shit in his house while she's outside going back to her car to leave. So I'm thinking... Oh shit, here we go. Because you hear, you, you see those things and you know that they're gonna, they're going a particular direction. Now with this episode, they kind of go in that direction, but the ending more so made me have more questions about what the meaning behind this episode was supposed to be more than anything else in the episode. So Tisa for me, I, I think is a reporter or something like that. And she ends up working with, she works with Luke Kirby. They get, there's a meteor shower. There's a meteorite that lands close by his house because he asked her out. And she reluctantly said yes. He picks it up. The water that it landed in is like red. He picks it up and it changes his mood. So they go back to his place after you know, picking it up. They have like a little moment. They're making out. He gets a little, a little too grabby, like I said. And she says, mm, no, I need to go. And so he kind of has a small little outburst. But then he said, you know what? I'm sorry. You're right. As she leaves, he starts destroying shit. Then, so, so the plot actually picks up really, really quickly. This happens in maybe the first... 10 minutes of the episode so after that she goes home the very next day it's her sister's birthday and she goes to celebrate with um, her sister her sister's husband her nephew I believe maybe it's her younger brother I'm not entirely sure I'm pretty sure I think it might be her nephew though and uh, I guess some random scientist or something. I don't know what relation he has. I just know in one part of the episode, he was like spitting out some scientific facts about what's going on with the meteor. So they they end up like going her. So Rhea, Rhea Seahorn plays Tisa's uh, sister. They end up going out to a bar. A lot of her, a lot of her coworkers are there, including Luke Kirby. And all the guys in the bar just start fucking fighting. They're taking shots of... They're taking shots with the meteorite in it. It changes the color of the liquid to red. And, you know, everybody's shooting them. And all the dudes just start fighting. So they end up leaving, going home. Some biker that she works with, I guess... Uh, kind of comes on to her, they're rushing out, so it turns into, oh, well, just go ahead and ignore me there, you stupid bitch. <sighs> okay, I get it. He follows them home. Ike Baron Holtz plays Rhea Seahorn's husband. He goes outside, fights the dude, I guess kills him, and he's clearly affected by everything. So, talking about the actual acting in the, in the episode, I thought it was okay. I thought, uh... Taisa Farmiga, um, she has a very particular look, 
So just in general, like even from American Horror Story to most of the stuff that I've seen her in, she just has a very particular look. I think she does an okay job with what she's given. There's really nothing to elevate here or to really show out for. But I also think that it's a little, even some of the other interactions as well. Mostly, the, the thing that most caught my attention is the story because I just wasn't sure where they were going to take it. And so it turns out after, you know, everybody starts fighting in the bar, Ike Baron Holtz kills this dude, he attacks Thaisa. Rhea hits him over the head with a, with a skillet that she bought her for her birthday. She hits him over the head to knock him out. They end up escaping. They get hit by a car as they're backing out of the, out of the driveway. So they end up running off and going to look for, for her uh, nephew, who's played by um, Percy Hines White, who's gay in this episode. And it, it, it's uh, the reason why I bring that up is that it's a bit of a callback to earlier in the episode when Luke Kirby and Tisa was having that interaction. They were making out. He got a little grabby. Percy Hines White and the actor that plays his boyfriend, the same thing happens because he's affected by the, the meteorite. So they end up finding him. They end up having to escape from Luke Kirby again. Um, they knock him out. He, he's going to drown because they end up pushing him into the lake or whatever. And this rock that he was holding ends up like dragging him down. So I don't know if he was dead after he got hit in the head by the rock on the chain. But he's definitely going to drown. So they end up being rescued and taken to this medical center. I don't really want to say facility because it's, it's similar to medical tents or something like that. And this was, this was where we found out that, you know, they were taking blood tests and everything like that. They take Percy's blood test. I'm, I'm forgetting the, the character's actual names. That's why I've been calling them by the, by the actor's real names, by the way. They're taking his blood. And there was a moment when Luke started to attack Taisa that he started to turn. And he stopped himself from turning into this... You know, rage monster. That's what we're going to call it. And it turns out that his blood is clean. So everybody's thinking that it's some type of virus or parasite. But then he pulls out a meteorite that was in his back pocket. And he says, I've had this on me basically the whole night. It's not the meteorite. This is like a placebo. This, this doesn't cause the, the effects that we've been seeing. And she says, well, you didn't let it control you. I saw that you stopped yourself from turning. And, and he says, I made that choice. I didn't want to. So the meteorites are a placebo for the actions of how all the guys have been, been acting. So what's the... I might be trying to look too deep into this. But then again, I don't really know how else to look into it because this is the way that they presented it. So what's causing the guys to just not give a fuck about anything, not give a fuck about just basic human decency in no regards to lead them to do all this shit. They're fighting people, they're more aggressive, they're, you know, doing a whole bunch of bad shit and it's only affecting the guys. So with the title being not all men and all this extra shit is happening, what's the meaning that they're trying to, What what's the the metaphor that they're trying to use here. Because I'm not really, the way that they presented it, I'm not really getting it. And again, like I said before, I'm going to have to go back and look for different explanations for some of these episodes. But for me, the reason, and, and for whoever's watching this, you might automatically be able to make a connection, right? But what's tripping me up about it is the fact that none of this shit started happening until after the meteorite shower and these meteorites started landing and, and people started interacting with them people started drinking the, the the water from the meteorite I mean hell the, the meteorite contaminated like a water supply like when Luke Kirby's character gets pushed into the lake 
we see a shot from in from in the lake and him falling into the water. The water is red. That's the color that the meteorite changes changes liquid to red. So none of this shit. Started, the guys didn't start being super aggressive and whatever until after this happened. So if this is supposed to be some metaphor about not all men are going to embrace being shitty people, then why did none of this shit start happening until after the meteorites hit? And people started interacting with them. That the meteorites really weren't the cause of it. Because legitimately, even if it's supposed to be a placebo, what the... So you mean to tell me that these guys are getting... Like the these super veiny faces, their eyes are turning bloodshot red, and it's not the meteorite. Then what the fuck is it? So that's my question that I have about the episode. Um, again, it wasn't an overall bad episode. I think it probably goes into the rank of one of the the better episodes, but just because of kind of their explanation or their execution of the subject matter I'm just a little confused on the metaphor that they're trying to use simply because what I see on screen doesn't really fit the the, the type of um, subtle explanation that they've presented but if the meteorite isn't causing the rage then what is you get what I'm saying so hopefully this makes sense to whoever sees this but that's my review of not all men episode 7 of the Twilight Zone. Check out my other reviews for the other episodes. And yeah, guys, as always, I appreciate the support, whether it's 1, 5, 10, or 100 views. And I'll be catching up with you guys later.